all of this because now we can see things on a on a scale that our grandparents couldn't see 50 years ago 60 70 years ago we didn't have satellites where ph- photography where you could be now begin to see the scale of some of these events that have played out on our planet so i try to bring in as much of that as possible then the crown of that is you go out in the field and you start seeing this stuff for the and, and i'll tell you even with all of the photography and the videos and the drone footage and everything, seeing that, until you get out in the field, you yeah. know, it, it, it just, that's when it hits you. You begin to realize, I'm like a microbe here. Yeah. You know, I'm like a microbe. These things that have played out on the surface of this planet are in another realm altogether. So. Yeah, you can start to appreciate the the. The literal, like, I, I, one of the terms I've heard you use is, is like, it's they off, they call uh, America was also known as as the New World, and it it literally is because it was, it's built on the ruins yep. of the old world, right. and you can get a sense for those some of those processes when you start to see this. It's, right. It, it, these catastrophes, and that's why I think catastrophism such a, and and the evidence for it is such an important key that unlocks the possibility for a longer timeline and civilizations yeah. and things like this is because it literally changed the surface of the earth like like it, it it's between the the flooding the fires the sea level rise and falls it changes the surface of the earth and and oh yeah, this is the video we put what together. is this the devil's canyon okay this is drone footage from actually none I, other I than didn't put this oh video. shit right? ben yeah. van kirkwick <laughs> yeah Am I, am, am I okay to... go? And be, I sent it to you for this very reason. Yeah, okay, but I want to make sure that it's understood. <laughs> this is Ben's work here. I did, yes. I did this is one it. of the places we visited. This was a canyon that was probably cut in a matter of a week or two. and Cut by... Hit play. Yeah. By one of the great floods. Now, let's take a look at this. Yeah, this was a, a, basically an outflow canyon, like down yeah. to the Snake River, right? This yeah. Is, and and what you're seeing here is not a canyon produced over millions of years, but a canyon produced over a few weeks by a wow. flow that probably would have been close to 50 million cubic feet per second or greater. And so this entire canyon was rushing with water. Yes, for a short period of time. For a and short it's been period dry of time. since. It's like, <sighs> yeah. So now this is in the channel scan. So this was on one of our tours, and you'll see. As we pan around, and again, a lot of this is not going to be, yeah, it's not going to necessarily speak to somebody until you've been trained to read the language. Right. But now you can see here, you know, there's there's the group. There's some outcrop boulders that were left in the aftermath of the great flood flows. We're having, Those things on the left? Yeah. Yeah. There you can see our our vans. Um, how, how deep is that from the very... Middle of it to the top. The deepest part, what it would be, eight hundred feet, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Six, six to eight hundred feet. Oh my god! It was, I mean, it was it overflowing this at one point. It probably well, it started, it with, started an overflow. with an overflow and then it cut down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And here is what you call a cataract, this bowl-shaped feature. Now, this entire landscape that you see here was completely submerged. This Palouse Falls is all that. That's the whole remnant, but you can <clears> see it's cutting its own little cataract there but the cataract produced by the big flood was this big round thing that you're seeing all in here this is one of our regular places to visit and it's mind-boggling in scale so this is one of your great features here this is called potholes cataract picture out here this is like a turbulent moving sea okay the entire width of the of the scene here it's probably close to 200 feet deep it's choked with thousands of icebergs it's moving towards the viewer and this is a ridge and behind you you can't see here it drops down into the columbia valley this water is pouring over this ridge and these walls here are about 400 feet high think about this if you have floodwaters coming through ripping up stuff excavating eroding Well, that's half of it. The other half of the equation is that that material is transported and it has to be deposited somewhere. Mm. So 
you learn to correlate both of those. What kind of rock is ripped up from here, and where does it end up? Right. But you're going to see West Bar here, which is pretty amazing. We're coming around. This is West Bar. You're going to see it now. So are there giant rocks here that came from somewhere else? Oh, yeah. Like glacial erratics. Yeah. yeah. There's there's rocks and huge chunks of granite that probably came from Canada that are yeah. deposited out on this giant, uh, like a strewn floodplain. And where these coolies ended out is just these boulder fields that go yeah. for hundreds of square miles of just wow. huge yeah. chunks of basalt, even some granite that yeah. probably came from a long way away. And then you get these big erratics where like haystack rock and things like that that are just yeah. these giant boulders that were deposited. Now I want you to look places. here at the surface of this three mile long, two or 300 foot boulder bar has giant current ripples on it. Now the height of these current ripples varies between 30 and 50 feet. The height of like a up to a five story building, um, and that's how we know without any doubt at all. There we go. Look at these. These are the kind of current ripples. I mean, you, you you'll see them walking along a sandbar in a creek, except that these current ripples are gigantic. Like I said, from isn't this also seen in the Sahara? Well, you have sand dudes in the Sahara, and they're being blown by wind. Uh, not water, and they're they're dynamic. They're constantly moving. These are not moving. These are pretty much l like they were when they were deposited thirteen or fourteen thousand years ago. When this gravel bar, it's actually a boulder <clears throat> bar. That's what you see when the tide comes out of the beach. Yeah, that's it's right. Scale and variance, right? It's it's yeah. a great example of it. Like these, the same sort of phenomena at work in small scale as it did with this. Right. You can imagine this current of water coming around the inside of this bend, just giant current of water that left these current ripples. Mm -hmm. Wow. These 50 foot high current ripples that are there now. That's, it's, it's almost impossible to comprehend that. <clears throat> Wait till you see it firsthand, Danny. Yeah. You, you, you got to put on your bucket list that you want to go on one of these yeah. tours. I'm coming. Yeah, no, hasn't, haven't people shown, pointed out specifically, I think it might have been Jimmy who pointed out that those things are near the reshot structure, those water ripples. That was me. That was you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Maybe Jimmy got it from you, because I think I heard Jimmy say it too. Well, Jimmy has been arguing that the reshot structure is Atlantis. Exactly, yeah. I don't agree with that. Now, right. I remember you were here last time. You said it's Azores. I think that the, but, the most light, if it, if it existed... I think the most likely place that's the most consistent in the details of Plato's two dialogues is the Azores as a remnant. Mm -hmm. Those islands are the tops of mountains whose bottoms are part of a plateau that uh, about which there is a lot of evidence that it has subsided by a substantial amount since the last ice age. Mm -hmm.